Hey everybody, welcome to another Q&A as part of SF Indie Fest Livable Planet Film Festival. Uh, you have just had a chance to see uh, the really terrific film, Once You Know, uh, which was directed by Emmanuel Kaplan and in, done in collaboration with Anne-Marie Sengla. Uh, glad to have you here, Emmanuel. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Chris. Uh, maybe a good place to start is um, when you started this journey, did you know that you wanted to make a film or were you just kind of exploring different ideas when did it when did you know that this you wanted to go down the rabbit hole of making a movie <laughs> um, it took it took a while to make the film about eight years but right from the beginning i knew it was actually going to be a, a film um, the desire to make the film took other uh, shapes beforehand uh, I, I wrote a lot about it and uh, but i wanted to make a film but i just didn't know what what uh, shape it would take what would be the formal uh, um, the external form, I knew what the content was going to be. Uh, and it, it really was a long process of, of searching, uh, sometimes in the dark, and trying to find what was my own uh, way of, of expressing certain... The difficulty with climate, there's, there's not, nothing less sexy than climate change. Um, it's so big, you don't see it. It's so slow, you don't see it. So it's highly impersonal. And so how do you make something so large and big and impersonal and geologic in, 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 in magnitude, personal and visceral and, and, and gut felt? And that was really the journey for me, trying to find um, sometimes uh, artifacts and ways of, 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 of uh, playing with the story and, and the, narr the narrative arc to, to, to take us on a journey on when, when in the first place you would think that really it's, it's a, a it's a hard sell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's just a really kind of um, beautiful kind of cinematic essay um, in that way. How did you decide to like the places that you visited and the people that you spent time with? I mean, in the sense of like, was it a lot of just kind of exploring of saying, okay, well, how does this kind of stick within the larger story or how did you make those decisions? Mm. Well, the film in the beginning uh, was really more about climate scientists. And it was uh, very much centered on their own experience facing uh, what we call in the film toxic knowledge. And you know, some of them for 20, 30 years. And so my, my first efforts were trying to find the people who would be willing to uh, drop the white blouse, I say, um, because their whole life they've been valued for their objectivity. And, and here I am telling them, okay, tell me about your feelings. Uh, when it comes to climate. And so it was hard to find people who are both very credible um, because they have the credentials uh, in the work they did as a climatologist and people who were also willing to be vulnerable in front of the camera. So it was really trying to find the, the, that combination. And it was a matter of, of, you know, talking to people, doing a lot of search online and then, you know, putting the foot in the door and then having a first uh, preliminary interview. And after that preliminary interview, saying, okay, this is the right person, let's, let's go further. It was a very long process, a very long casting, let's say. Yeah, well, I imagine, I mean, one of the things that's often talked about in documentary is like what we call like trust building, right? So what was it that you think that, um, how were you able to connect with them so that they were willing to kind of um, open themselves up in a greater way? Um, or is it just part of their own personalities that they were just, they were wanting to share this aspect of them. They just wanted to give be given permission. Do you think or yeah? Uh, no, actually, I was lucky at the time to be working on another film, which gave me uh, the means to travel because I was traveling for that other project called uh, Human. Uh, it's a film by the French photographer Yann Arthus Bertrand, who did uh, the Earth Seen from Above, and uh, a film called Home. And uh, for Human, we were interviewing th literally thousands of people in, in hundreds of countries. Um, and asking them about very intimate questions about their, their lives. So I, I was spending my time just interviewing people in, with very in-depth subjects. And so I, I, the way I tackled those interviews was very similar. So I asked them very personal questions right from the get-go to see, okay, are they going to be playing that game or not? And then what I think, so that was really the, that initial interview where I would say, okay, let's continue or let's not continue because it's going to be too difficult for them to open up. Uh, but I, I actually, in that process, I only put aside two or three people, and it was really um, right, right from the beginning, it was the right people. Um, 
And, and, and I think what helped was that it was a very long process. I mean, I filmed them over several years. So they knew that I was, it was a serious project and that I was putting a lot of energy into it. And, and then what happened was the film that was about experts became a film about myself because I, I realized, and that wasn't, I was pushed by my, my collaborator, Anne-Marie Sangla and, and other people around me and uh, who were helping me produce the film saying, you can't ask people to be vulnerable if you're not gonna play that game yourself. And so at, at a certain point, it was very late in the process, like four years down the road, I said, okay, I have to include my own journey in the story. And the journey became the, the back and forth, if you've seen the film, between the local and the global. And so the local is me and the, lo and the global is all these experts and the back and forth. And so I think the, the, the trust relationship worked because uh, I put myself on the line as well. How do you think that that process, do you, did it transform the way you saw anything or um, how do you think it kind of, how did you kind of grow as a person, as a filmmaker in, um, in doing that? Oh, uh, well, I don't know as a filmmaker, but uh, well, as a filmmaker, I had to learn everything. I was, I was a, a camera operator, so I had to put the technique down, but as far as directing, producing, financing, everything. I learned everything on, uh, as I went. So that's also why it took a, a really long time uh, because it's incredibly hard to make a film. <laughs> it's, you know, if you want to be, you know, find a cheaper uh, art form, you know, be a writer. You just need a pen and, you know, <laughs> or maybe a laptop. That's all you need. But making a film is just such a fucking pain in the ass. But it's, you know, in the end, it's worth it. I mean, it was, it's, I'm still, working on getting it out uh, we're lucky to have a great distribution in france we're gonna have a theatrical release you know full national theatrical release uh, but we're still working you know with uh, trying to find the right people for the different territories uh the us canada uh, we have video projects in the us uh, who do who did who are doing the uh, educational release but so it's a really really incredibly complex world and i'm and i'm learning everything as i go so if you don't know anything about film but you're interested just go for it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> uh, you know, there. the thing that I thought that worked out so well is I know it took some time, but like the kind of nuances and detail come through, you know? And so like, if you had made the same film in a shorter period of time, it's like, I just don't know if it would have had the kind of emotional depth uh, that's there. Um, I mean, I don't know if you consider yourself an activist uh, at all, but like, you know, when we finish watching the film, what's the kind of main takeaway that you'd like for you know, audiences to just kind of to think about or ruminate on? Yeah, Do. long, long answer to that. So I'm going to try to be really short. Um, <laughs> yes, I consider myself an activist, absolutely. But actually it grew on me in the film. I mean, there was such a back and forth between my life and the film and putting my life into the film. But also the film had an impact on my life uh, very deep because until a minute ago, before I talked to you, I'm, I was uh, knee deep in organizing uh, uh, the next um, civil disobedience action with my local group uh, at Extinction Rebellion. Um, I became very involved with the French branch of Extinction Rebellion for mm. the film, and, and uh, it remains a big part of my life. And I'd never considered myself an activist before I made the film, so it really grew on me as, uh, as I faced all these issues. So. Um, I, 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 I guess the main, main takeaway is that um, this is not a film about climate or a film about biodiversity loss. It really is a film about um, our industrial society and whether or not it will be here in the years to come or decades to come. And how do you cope with that emotionally and how do you let it sink deep enough that it actually becomes uh, a criterion uh, uh, it, it becomes something that impacts the way you act every minute of your life. Um, and, and we are trying to help people who will be facing these questions for the first time because a lot of people know about this, but a lot of people don't at all. And at least in France, where it's going to be open to a, a large public, it can be very um, paralyzing. And so we, we're, we're developing an impact campaign with a, an action guide with like 160 different actions that people can take oh, wow. uh, with regards to climate, to energy, uh, independence, and, and, and related issues of resilience. And, uh, and we hope that people, you know, I guess, you know, I mean, there is, 
the artist in me and there is the the activist in me and and I guess both are, are hoping that people take different things away from the film um, and I guess the artistic part of me just want people to have a heartfelt um, response to the the, the, the the suggestion that this film is it's just a suggestion you know it's 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 just a story among others and it resonates or it doesn't resonate and it's that simple you know and the artist in me wants to say nobody's going to save the world and this the world doesn't need to be saved and the world is fine because the world has millions of years and billions of years to to run its course we on the other hand have a problem <laughs> we humans modern humans have a really big problem and it's going to get much worse and we better collaborate and talk to each other when that happens and that's the activist <laughs> Uh, most definitely, uh, very much in agreement. So, um, you know, Emmanuel, thank you again for sharing the film. And uh, for those in the audience, I mean, please, um, you know, go on social media and share about this uh, wonderful film once you know that you've just shared and let, uh, let's kind of let it spread around and let people know what you've discovered here. So thank you again, Emmanuel, for taking the time to uh, speak with us and also make this terrific film. Thanks a lot, Chris. And uh, yeah, if you want to see the film in the US, Talk to us, uh, you find a way through uh, the festival uh, and we can talk about distribution. Sounds good. Thanks again, Emmanuel. Take care, bye-bye.